the beginning of this video for Chris's Chris talk I'm going to talk about marketing and that was a request from one of our viewers saying yes they would like to hear more about marketing if you want to hear more than just this one or two minute talk I'd go to this video right here I did a full hour-long podcast with Steve Reckner and we talked about a bunch of different types of marketing strategies but our very the very first thing that I asked getting into the field I asked what is the one thing that works and I think that's the most common question I get a lot whenever a home inspector is just becoming a home inspector what is the one thing that I can do that gets me work sorry to answer it this way but there is not one thing that works there it is a little bit of everything and I like to call it the shotgun effect because I was really annoyed whenever someone told me that it's that there's not one thing but it and it's true there's not and the shotgun effect is you do a little bit of everything you have Google Facebook Instagram your TikTok now I'm getting people asking me questions through TikTok <laughs> who would have known uh, you have uh, um, you have handwritten notes marketing you have person to person marketing you have reverse pop buys marketing you have all kinds of marketing and the and you just do them all. The only thing that I absolutely do not recommend doing is the pay to play marketing, such as those websites where you pay them a referral fee and they send you work. Yelp and I think Home Advisor are the two most ones that like to target home inspectors the most because some guys are getting work on there, but if you break down the math, you're actually not making any money at all. And if you just took that, 10 or $20 per marketing thing and you just took someone out to coffee and you talk to them exactly and ask them questions exactly what they want or what they're looking for to help reorganize your home inspection business, it'll be worth a thousand times more. Anyways, that's Chris's Chris Talk. If you want to know more about this marketing strategies or all the different types of marketing home inspectors do, go here. Go to this video right there and it will tell you more about what we do or the strategies behind each type of marketing strap style. If you want if you want to ask more questions, drop in the comments section and just smash that like button. That's how I get more views. All right. That was Chris's Chris talk. I tried to make that as quick as possible. Going into the property, it's a 1980s property, only 1,500 square feet. I'm going to focus on the HVAC systems in the beginning phase, and then I'm gonna go through all the weird stuff that we find in this flip. And because that was a request from a viewer too as well, he wanted to, uh, the breakdown of the HVAC system about how I go about it. All right, let's go check it out. Okay, so starting with the evaluation of the HVAC system, one thing that you wanna remember about yourself, I guess, it's you're a home inspector. So you're a general practitioner of a home. So you know a little bit about a lot. So don't stress out too much about not knowing absolutely everything about an HVAC system. That is an HVAC technician's job. Your job is to determine is it working or is it not when it comes down to the basics. Yes, I know there's a whole lot more into it, but is it working, is it not? Is it working, list all the problems with it. Is it not working, list all the problems with it. So the very first start area that you're gonna start determining if it's working or not is the thermostat. So what we do in the very first strategy is our first pass through is you turn the HVAC system down. So you go to the thermostat, you turn it down to cool, and you drop it down. I normally like to do about 10 degrees at the, from their settings because from the setting, so let's say it's 72, I drop it down to 62. Normally it doesn't meet that setting in a two, two hour time period. And then also it reminds me that I moved it 10 degrees. So what do I do? I move it back up 10 degrees before I leave. So I leave it exactly the way they had it. So after that, we go outside and this is our wide pass through and that's where we end up running into the condenser and I'll talk about that. So the next phase of evaluating the HVAC system is after you have it on, which as you're doing your outside pass, you'll come by it. Is it on or is it off? Is this condenser running? If it's not running, you have to backtrack back to the thermostat or go into the attic to try to figure out why it's not operating. But as soon as you see it, a lot of this stuff is first impression. How does it sound? How old does it look? Is the insulation installed properly? Is it leaking? Is the outside damaged or not? 
Is there clear of foliage? You know, you have to start asking all your normal home inspection questions about the outside condenser. Is a, lot, a really good sign is whenever you throw your hand over the top, is warm air coming off the top of the uh, condenser. If it's just the normal air, it's probably not cooling very well. So right here, um, also is the primary refrigeration lines condensating. Is the small line warm to the touch? So these are just general signs right here. Is the HVAC system or is the condenser working or not? And um, you always wanna pull off the other data off the data plate here. And this is a carrier unit or a Bryant, sorry, a Bryant unit. So in the serial number, it's always the second two numbers. So this is a 2001. Uh, you do numbers divisible by 12 and six. So this is a 42, so that's three and a half ton. And it also has R22 Freon. You wanna pull off your breaker size to make sure your breaker is matching inside. So we're gonna educate the client, let them know the size, the year. It's an R22 Freon, so this is a discontinued unit. Also, it's 19 years old. So we'll let them know it's approaching the end of its life expectancy. So they're gonna come in here knowing that this unit is old and that it probably doesn't have much life expectancy on it anymore. So the next phase is going to be whenever you end up in the attic and uh, um, in the attic you can see that it doesn't meet the requirements. You want a path to the HVAC system and then you also need a safe platform to be able to work on the HVAC system. So here I'm going to crawl over here and go around and make my way over there. but. That is another thing you document. Is there is it easily accessible? You gotta think normal people, everyday people, are the ones that are gonna be taking care of this system. So do you think they're gonna be able to crawl across all of this and make it to the HVAC system every time something's wrong? Okay, I shot this once and I said it all and the video wasn't even recording. So let's start up in the attic. So made it over what I like to do first for my first part of the strategy is I like to start from top to bottom so I'll start with the flue I'll make sure that the flue is properly installed it exits out it's air it's watertight from the attic side so if you see light coming in uh, it's a it's a sign that it might not be watertight and you want to make sure that the flue is connected all the way through so it's attached it's mechanically ad attached or there's no separations in the flue then you're gonna come across and then you're gonna look at the furnace. The furnace, a very common call out on these old furnaces is they have this gray flex line entering into the cabinet. Well, you want a rigid pipe leaving the cabinet because sometimes these blower motors get out of balance. The cabinet will vibrate and it will damage this um, gas line and you can get a gas leak in your attic space. You also wanna open up the furnace Check it, take a look at the heat exchanger to see if it's rusted or compromised and uh, Sometimes it is compromised or rusted and you're gonna ride up into life on it And a good sign that you can if your heat exchanger is coming to fail You'll actually see the rust particles of the heat exchanger just sitting outside of the furnace Moving over to the side a little bit, you can obviously see this one needs work and you're gonna call an HVAC technician, but you still wanna document absolutely everything you can find at the time of the inspection. So right here we have questionable repairs. It doesn't even look like they use the right HVAC sealant. This just looks like caulking, which is, um, we're gonna write this up as just, you know, poor, poor repairs. You also can see where the, the coil, coils are breaking away from the housing. You have air leaks here. You have air leaks around the primary drain line. You have air leaks around the refrigeration system, refrigeration lines. And uh, um, you also starting from top to bottom, so no access to the coils, air leaks. You have uh, no secondary drain line. Your pan isn't installed properly. And part of looking at your primary drain line, you want to look at the primary drain line make sure that there's a negative slope because this is a gravity system you want to see if there's a p trap in place and then also um, you want to make sure that it's insulated all the way out i think the code is is five feet of insulation on the primary drain line but i live in houston texas and it's hot so these condensate all the way through the the entire attic system so i go ahead and call it all out 
after I broken down, I called out everything I absolutely can on this HVAC system. I'll move on to the duct work and I'll start looking at the duct work around the system. You can see that the duct work is crimped. Uh, the gray ductwork is failing. It's not lifted and supported properly. And then also, uh, they didn't replace it all. So you can even see the insulation breaking apart over that pipe over there too as well. So they're looking at probably a new HVAC system. It's 19 years old. If they come in and they say, hey, as a home inspector, yes, I am saying it is working at the time of the inspection, but you have all of these things wrong with it and it's just like buying a used car that's beat up. How long is this used car going to work on your HVAC system? So, you know, there's a lot going on here and you know, some of your HVAC technicians can even probably list things in front of me and that's, that's good, that is your job. And my job is to say, hey, there's enough going on that you guys need to come out here and work. So that is just a simple breakdown of the attic section of the HVAC system. One of the very last things that we do when it comes to evaluating the HVAC system is we grab one of these infrared thermometers. Yes, I know that these infrared thermometers only read surface temperature, so they're not the best when it comes to getting the exact temperature of the air coming out of the registers, but it's enough to, to send off warning signs. So, for example, if I have like 48 degrees in here and then I have 55 degrees in another room, then I know that there's something going on between the coils in that room. So they are good still to identify problems. So the strategy is, is you want to take the temperature in every room to make sure that you have a good consistency of airflow in every room. And then also, uh, it can send off warning signs if it's not cooling at all. If it's only coming, if the surface temperature is only like 68 or 70 degrees and we typically on average get a, 50, a lower 50s number with an HVAC system then we know we have issues so I do say this is still a good tool to use to determine to set off warning signs but not getting the exact 100% temperature so the strategy is is the very last phase is we go through we take all the temperatures whenever it's cool and then the very last thing we do is we turn on the furnace after you've already looked at the furnace because that's really important you want to see it to make sure that it's safe to operate because normally gas is running through this furnace and if it's not connected properly and there's gas in the attic space and you light it not a good thing so look at the hvac system look at the furnace make sure it's connected after you've done that the very last thing we do is we turn on the heater the heater works we take all the temperature again and then we do an infrared scan of the home and that will help us determine the more accurate temperature too as well to make sure that our tools are reading it properly so that's it so if that did help you out quite a bit on evaluating the hvac system please drop it in the comments section that that helped you out and smash the like button and then if you are an hvac technician document everything that i missed so i can learn all right so the next thing is let's go around and document all the wonky things on this property because just walking around we we got some good stuff all right all right let's go check it out Okay, I'm actually going to wrap the video up on here on just this video. Part two is going to follow on later this week. It'll come out pretty quick, I'm sure, uh, because I already have all the content. This video just took a little bit longer to make for just the HVAC system. But these flippers, they had some pretty crazy stuff on it. So just keep an eye out for the next video and follow us up on that. Please, If you want to catch it a little bit easier, hit that subscribe button, click that little bell, and you can catch us all, all our content. All right, have a good one. Catch us on the next one. See ya. Bye.